Blokes, Sheilas, how are we? <laughs> uh, here I've got a module, an amp plate out of a PVPR15D. It's a Class D powered, uh, Class D output stage, 15 inch uh, PA speaker. That's the heat sink. I'm taking that off the back, cleaned all the crap off it so it doesn't go everywhere. This thing, um, it was booting, there was lights, there was, there was pretty lights happening. Um, the signal was making its way up to the output stage, but not beyond it. Um, it's got a couple of TDA 2922 and 2920 chips. These things here, they're Class D drivers, all self-contained. Uh, they're driven in a BTL, a bridge tied load. Uh, configuration to tie the because they are a stereo chip to tie the left and the right channel together um, to get more power out of them the 20 TDA 8920 is lower power and that powers the tweeter in bridge configuration and the 22 powers the low frequency driver the chips look identical though they're just different numbers and different ratings um, so this is one of those Typical class D repairs where half the shit inside the thing's blown up. One thing goes, it's like a it's like a chain reaction. One part, one component shorts out, so another component blows open. That destroys something else in the process. And because you've got two channels, often they affect each other, connected to the same power supply and sends a spike back or whatever. Um, yeah, for various reasons they they go nuclear pretty pretty easily. So this one was a bit of a nightmare. I replaced, oh, I'll go through what I replaced. I'll just unplug everything. I just gave it a test. That's working good. <clears throat> now, I did contact PV Australia, um, the Australian distributor, to um, just order another one of these boards or at least see what it was worth. But what happens with a lot of these guys is they just don't respond. So they're all trying to be Apple, where you just have to buy another one and basically as a customer you can get fucked. Um, they don't support you, they don't want to fix anything, they just tell you to buy another one. So you end up with this big, big plastic fucking glass reinforced friggin cabinet in landfill just taken up just it's just a shit way of doing business make your stuff disposable make it out of plastic make it fucking massive and throw it in the bin and then make another one it just seems shit so I like fixing stuff people call me stupid for that but I don't know at the end of the day I used to be out five bucks worth of parts you know you the, the key is knowing which which parts that's the hard part <laughs> replacing them is a piece of piss Finding him is a piece of piss. Um, yeah, anyway. So, I don't have the computer rigged up, so I'm not going into great detail, but you can give me a give me a ring if, or give me a yell if you uh, have a similar problem. I might be able to help you out. I replaced... What did I replace? R35, R34, they're open circuit. R80, R81, they're open circuit. Q2 was short. Um... C114 and C113 were physically leaking onto the board. You could see a halo around them of schmoo. The clock chip had gone short circuit. That's a, uh, what is it? A 74 series HC T00 chip. So that's a, uh, a quad and AND gate. That generates the clock signal. C. 117 and C86 had gone short circuit and that had blown up both chips. That's the output chips there. They're about, I don't know, four bucks each. Pretty cool. Caps were like, you know, three cents each. Resistors were like a couple of cents each. So really, oh, I replaced some of these. I used the hot air station to remove that chip so that heat would have damaged those caps. So I replaced them as well. I've had some in stock fight it up and it worked. 
Um, yeah, the, that little board you'd think you'd be able to get for like 50 bucks made, but and they probably do have stock, but they just couldn't be fucked answering you, so you just have to take things in your own hands. It's, it's kind of sad. I, I'd really, I'd really like to have a manufacturer that, um, really offers good support. Um, they all say you've got to become a service center. You become a service center and they pay you nothing. They pay you below minimum wage because you're a contractor. They treat you as a slave. Um, they might give you access to schematics, but maybe not. They might give you trade price, price to parts, but I've had other guys say, oh, you can become a, a repairer, but you, you're paying retail on the parts. Like, fuck off. Are you serious? Like, so that they're, they're just trying to make it so no one wants to fix their shit so they can just make more because the, the margin's bigger and there's less bullshit you've got to deal with on the phone. Um, but yeah, you'd think if you offer just that amp board, clearly there's a, there's a problem with it. The biggest problem is, see these little, little pads here? Those little silicon rubber thingies, they're stuck to the aluminium. They're a heat transfer pad. But they're made it. They're made out of like a foam. Um, it's got. It's like a rubber that's got silicon embedded in it, probably. Um, but when you use them, you're supposed to derate the value of the chip, and sometimes by like fifty or more percent. So say it's a two hundred watt driver. If you use those pads, you you should only be advertising it as a, a hundred watt driver. Um, and like I say, some tell you to derate even further when you use them. They're supposed to have a clamped on heat sink like that directly directly on it with heat transfer compound and probably a micro washer, maybe not. Um, I don't know if that's insulated or not, probably not. Um, so that that all the figures that these chips are rated at would only apply if you've got the perfect heat dissipation according to the data sheet guidelines without straying one iota. And these guys have got it going through a rubber pad, through the chassis. You can see that's just the chassis, it's just the three mil alley. And then uh, they sh smear some schmoo on there, heat transfer compound and clamp that on. So there's, there's two interface, well really there's three interface layers and it's just, yeah, it's a really inefficient way of dissipating heat. So that's probably why it's blowing up. And then one part goes short and it blows the living fuck out of everything attached to it. But anyway, she's all good now. Um, yeah, well, it's just an, another one. So when I, when I first fired it up, I replaced everything I thought was right. And I was getting clock signal. Um, I didn't think to look at the peak to peak. Uh, voltage of the clock signal. Uh, it looked a little bit noisy, but I've seen that before, um, particularly on switch mode, power supply units, but I should have looked more carefully because there was a lot of ringing happen happening on the square wave where it hits the hits the voltage, it bounces for a second before it goes back to the other voltage, bounces for a second, and vice versa. Um, that should have rung some bells to me, but it didn't. Later on, when it still wasn't working, I investigated that further and found there was about 10 ohms to ground on the clock line, which is massively wrong. And the clock was trying to pump the clock signal into that and it was really struggling. It was probably making 0.1 of a volt instead of five volts or whatever. So that was my issue. Um, all the other shorter components obviously had to be repaired first. But um, yeah, I should have measured the clock line. The amount of times in class D gear or digital gear in general where a clock line a reset line, a chip enable line has gone short or similar, broken in connection somewhere. It's just, there's nothing booting the thing. It's like, um, it's just, it's waiting there, sitting there waiting to start running, but it's not getting a clock signal to tell it to start running. Uh, or the chip is permanently in reset um, or not enabled by the enable lines. Happens quite a bit, and it's very easy to fix, very cheap to fix. So that's one of the things you always look for the easiest thing first. Um, in the one in a million times it is that, and you're really happy. <laughs> anyway, I'll get this one back together, put some more schmoo on there, and um, put it back in the box and send it off.
Thanks for watching and listening to my rant. Take it squeezy, y'all.